This video is sponsored by my course, the Unreal Engine C++ Survival Course. Using my knowledge from working in the industry, we start from the basics and work our way up until we've created an online survival game with C++. We create vehicles, clothing, weapons, steam matchmaking, and much more. Get lifetime access for $25 using the link in the description. Hello guys, today I'm going to talk about plugins. This is actually a request from the Discord channel, so if you're not in that, the link's in the description. You can uh, get help in there and suggest videos and things like that. So, uh, what do plugins do? What's the point of a plugin? Well, I think plugins really separate uh, novice Unreal Engine developers from people that really know what they're doing. And there's a really strong reason to use plugins, and it's mostly just reusability. So, say you make a vehicle or a weapon or something, and you want to use it in another project, what you'll typically do is like copy and paste the code over, and it's a very poor way to reuse code. The better way to do it is to chuck it in a plugin, and then if you change to another project, you can just import the plugin that you made and go from there. There's a couple of different types of plugins. You have editor plugins and runtime plugins, and today we're going to focus on a runtime plugin. An editor plugin is a plugin that will modify the functionality of the editor in some way, and typically they are quite complicated, so I'm not going to talk about those today. So to follow along, uh, we're going to go to games, go to next, blank, um, and you don't really even have to follow along. You could get a lot of uh, knowledge just from watching what I'm doing in this video. So you don't really have to follow along, but you can if you want. So uh, we're going to go to C++ here, and I'm not going to do any starter content or anything like that. And I'm just going to call the uh, project plugin tutorial. So you always develop your plugins inside of a project. We'll go ahead and click on create project here. So now that I've created that project, I'm in Visual Studio, I'm going to open the project up by running a debugger, and I'll show you how to create a new plugin, and there's also some templates in there that we can talk about as well. Okay, so I've opened the project up, and I'm going to add a plugin, and if you're following along, you can do the same. So to make a plugin, we go to Edit, Plugins, and you can actually easily create plugins by just clicking New Plugin. And there are a few template uh, ones here. So if you were interested in doing editor plugins, there are ones like the editor toolbar button that give you a little bit of template code to get set up if you wanted to make something like that. Uh, but in our case, we're just going to go for a blank plugin. Um, and we can put some code in here if you want. There are other ones like content plugins that maybe just have like meshes or something like that in them. Uh, but in that case, we'll just do blank. And I'll just call it my plugin. We'll click create. So at this point, if you go to view options and click on show plugin content, you can see that our plugin actually has a content folder, but it doesn't have any C++ classes. So what I'll do is I'll add an actor. So say I wanted to make a vehicle and I want to reuse it, I will show you how you could do something like that with a plugin. So let's make a really basic actor here. We'll just go new C++ class, actor. And I'm going to call it the face player actor. So this is an actor that will always face the player. It's just a custom actor. Let's say I thought that was cool and I wanted to have it so that um, that was part of my plugin. If you click the drop down, you can see that we actually have the my plugin option there. And then we'll just click on create class to add this class, not to our project, but we'll actually be adding this to our plugin. So we'll click on create class. If you get an error message, that's fine. Just go ahead and close the editor here, and then click on Reload All in Visual Studio, and it will reload, and now we should see a Plugins folder on the side here. Okay, so if you expand the Plugins folder, you can see here's my plugin, and it's literally called My Plugin. And this folder here is a module, so I'll, I'll talk very quickly about modules. So everything in Unreal Engine is actually a module. If you come up to UE4, this is the editor here and you can expand it and look through all of this stuff. So for example, here are all the editor modules. So literally everything in the Unreal Engine, this is it all here. They're all just a bunch of modules. And a module is just some code, a build file, inside of a folder. It's nothing special. But basically, if we go to the source folder here, this is our game. So our project's actually called Plugin Tutorial. Our game itself is a module. So like literally everything is a module. And so inside of your plugin, your plugin is made up of modules. And by default, there's already one included for you. It's called My Plugin. But if you wanted to have a bunch of different modules, you could do that as well. You could have editor modules and runtime modules and all sorts of stuff. So this is a uh, this is going to be a runtime module because it's going to have an actor in it that we'll be putting into our game. So uh, here's the module here, and it's got a build file associated with it. And this is all of the other modules that this module uses, basically. And if we expand the uh, public and private here, 
here's my actor that I added to my plugin. So let's talk about the modules really quick. Um, I'm going to open up this .u plugin file here. And inside of the plugin, one of the things you define is all of the modules that will be in your plugin. And so in our case, we just have one module already in here. And there is a name for the module. There is a type, so you can have editor or runtime modules. And then also there's a loading phase. And the loading phase defines when the module should actually be loaded. So it might load when the engine boots up. It might load after the engine boots up. And so you can customize this by changing the loading phase if you want to do that. So in my face player actor.cpp inside of the tick function, I'm just going to add some code. And this will just make the root component always face the player. It's pretty simple functionality, not really that useful. I'm just using it as an example to show you uh, how to set up a plugin. And we will also include a header file here. And so that's the only actor that's in this plugin. And now we have a plugin with an actor in it. And you could literally drop this plugin into any other project and start using this actor. So I'll show you the actor really quick. I'm just going to run and we'll have a look at it. So under the view options, as long as you have show plugin content checked, you'll see my plugin C++ classes. And we can just drag the face player actor into the level. We could add a cube to it, for example. And now if I hit play, you can see that the cube always faces our actor. So you might like that functionality and you might go, oh, that's really useful. I want to use this in other projects. And that's why you would package this actor into a plugin. So that's one of the reasons you use plugins. Another thing is for editor tools. If you want to give your friend an editor tool, he can just install it as a plugin and it'll just work for him as well. So just to show you how this works, I have this other project called Narrative Demo. And inside of the plugins folder, I've just dropped my plugin in here. And now if I open up the uh, narrative project, I should actually have the face actor in this other project. So this is showing you the reusability. You can just drag and drop your plugins into whatever project you want. You can see here, I'll go to the My Plugin C++ classes. I'll drag in the player facing actor, just add a cube to it or whatever. And if I hit play, this is a totally different project, but it still uses that same functionality from the other project. So in the plugins menu, you have this package option. Um, I'm not really sure if it's necessary. I always just take the plugin and drop it into other projects. I never worry about the packaging step, uh, but you can package it from the editor as well. Before I close out this video, I thought I'd just show you a couple of examples of different modules. You can see here that in my quest editor that I made, I have a runtime module, which is the one that actually gets shipped into the game. And then I have these other editor modules, and this is like the quest editor that you use from the engine. There's also a thing here called blacklist platforms. And this allows you to define platforms that your plugin should not work with. So when you package your plugin, it will not try to package it for these platforms. Anyways, guys, that was just a quick video on plugins. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.